Let's move on and let's talk about Magma FinCorp. Uh, the stock has been rallying despite a weak quarterly number that they posted. In fact, it's up 47% in the last uh, eight trading sessions. Talk about a buzzer. So let's try and understand really what's happening with the disbursements uh, and what kind of improvement, if at all, they are uh, witnessing in the funding environment. Joining us right now, Sanjay Chamriya. He's the VC and MD on the show uh, of the company Magma FinCorp joining in on the show. Sanjay, hi, morning. Good to have you on the show. Wanted to understand, you know, your stock has been rallying despite weak disbursements across products and a drop in AUMs as well. Uh, what is it that you foresee for the third quarter? Do you sense that an improvement and a big one at that is coming by? And do you see your AUMs actually picking up? Hey, good morning and thanks for uh, having me on the show with you. See, the uh, stock price movement uh, earlier, the fall also was equally sharp as the rise has been. And uh, I think there is no correlation between the fall or the rise with the fundamentals of the company. And even today, uh, with the increase in the price, still it is uh, 0.6 times to the book value. And I can tell you, uh, being the MD of the company and the promoter, that the net worth of the company at 2,700 crore is absolutely pristine and there is no issue on that. In terms of the business fundamentals, as I've shared after our second quarter results, that uh, there has been a demand slackening in the vehicle industry and we can see even the November numbers. And we have pivoted uh, our uh, disbursal towards the used assets because in today's market it makes sense to finance the used assets where the installments are about 40% cheaper than the installment for the new asset whereas the freight earnings are the same and therefore the ability of the customer to pay the installment is a lot higher. And we are also seeing that in case of the used assets the uh, repayment behavior is superior to that of the new asset. Second. I have also shared that our cost of funds have gone up in the last 14 months by about 120 bips because of the risk aversion among the banks to lend to the NBFCs given the overall uh, sluggishness in the sector. So from July 2019, which is about five months prior, we changed our product mix without dropping the risk guards and uh, on an incremental lending now we are protecting our NIMS. So therefore our uh, gross yields have also improved by about 120 basis point. But the fact that my overall book at about 17,000 crore, 80% of that is fixed rate in nature, it's not floating. And therefore, it will take about four to six quarters for us to replace the older book at a lower yield with the newer book with the higher yield and therefore protect the spread on the overall book. So out of that six quarters, two quarters are almost ending in this December. <clears throat> Along with that, from October, we have also seen the drop in the interest rates uh, by about 50 to 75 basis points. With that, uh, it may take another three quarters or at the best four quarters for us to normalize our spreads. And the third impact which we have had in our result was on account of the credit losses which were higher. And there we had then shared our guidance for the second half of the year that uh, we expect even under the current tight economic circumstances that second half usually is much better there are no rains because of the festivals there is a lot more cash flows there's a lot more offtake and with the msp increase and with the government buying the agriculture produce from the mandis there's a lot more cash flows in rural india which is where we are lending so a combination of all these factors we are optimistic given the first half poor performance that second half should be better that is overall a uh, response from my side to you on the company fundamentals and its lack of correlation with the stock price where it is today. Okay. Uh, increase in the cost of funds have also kept margins under pressure. Do you see this continuing as well in the second half? Uh, you know, what have also been the recovery trends uh, in terms of uh, the demand environment? Are you seeing any improvement? So as I mentioned, in terms of the spreads that on the incremental lending, now we are maintaining the spreads. But on the overall book, uh, there is a compression in the spread by about uh, 1%, and that will continue, though it will start reducing gradually, and it will take about uh, three to four quarters. So 
most realistically by September 20 quarter. So Q2 of FY21 is when we expect that it should kind of neutralize. And until then, there will be a drag. Right now, the drag was 120 basis point, And this will go down progressively over the next three to four quarters. And it's a combination of two factors. One, the existing book getting replaced by the new book. And two, the progressive reduction in the cost of funds, which has gone down by about 50, 75 basis point. See, one of the things what we have done also is in Q2, and we said that we have retired all our short-term liabilities. So as on 30th of September, we have zero short-term liabilities. All our liabilities are long-term. And this has also uh, addressed our ALM issue. This is also one of the reasons as to why cost of funds go up, because obviously the short-term is at a lower cost, and long-term is at a higher cost. So this is what my outlook on the uh, spreads going into the future. So far, the demand recovery is concerned, unfortunately, in the new vehicle asset class, the demand recovery still is some time away. And uh, therefore, as I said, uh, today, almost about over 65% of our uh, lending in the vehicle finance is on account of the used assets and in the tractor segment, which typically uh, goes through a peak period between November to April. And uh, June to September is actually a weak period for the tractor sales. So tractor and the used assets put together is about 75% of our overall dispersal. And that's how we propose to build our uh, product mix going into the medium term as well in future. So our dependence on the uh, new assets will be a lot, lot lesser. Okay, fair point. So, uh, with the improvement in the funding environment for NBFC, Sanjay, do you uh, expect that your disbursements are going to normalize and even pick up soon? Yes, in fact, uh, I did give a guidance that uh, we have had a reduction in the AUM in the first half of the year. And we said that uh, we expect the disbursals to normalize in the third quarter at about closure to 1800 to 2000 crores and fourth quarter would be higher than that. With that, we propose to uh, claw back the reduction in the AUM which happened in the first half and therefore end the year on 31st March 2020 with the same AUM that we started on 1st April 2019, which would mean that in the second half of the year, our AUM will grow. At the same time, I don't want to unnecessarily be uh, taking uh, you know calls which can result in the asset quality issues because the undertone of the uh, recovery in the market is still not normal and is still there is a lot of caution around in terms of lending in the segment that we operate in. Okay, Sanjay, good to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining in.